Another week, another Armenian business lady, excuse me, a ladies. This time we got two guests. Whoa. And they started their business to raise funds for a cause, but we're going to find out what's going to happen next. So stay tuned. <laughs> guys i'm alice and you're watching on little lifestyle and this week we got tamzara coasters with us two lovely ladies jessica and arabik who are gonna be you talking about our their startup and before we get into it guys we talk about money we talk about mindset we talk about books so if you like all those things click the like button and subscribe because we post videos every wednesday all righty so we got our coffees Justice, yeah. she has a Follow, by the way, support Armenian, yeah, and then hello, summer because <laughs> this winter fit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's get talking. So, first and foremost, who is you? What do you do? Um, let's go out of it first because she's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, basically, thank you for having us, first of all. Uh, we're very excited. Um, so what I do other than make coasters is I work for the government of Canada. So it's a very different thing. I am doing politics by day and coasters by night. <laughs> so it's a very different world and I never anticipated to be doing this. So yeah, that, that's me. Interesting. And Jess, I know you have an interesting story too. So. I am a special education technician at L'Ecole Armenienne School Pago, which is an Armenian private school here located in Montreal, Quebec. And I work with teenagers um, with special needs, behavioral, and also mental health as well. You guys, like, who would have thought two people, one in the government <laughs> work uh, environment and another one working as, as basically like a consultant within a school, right? like would become these creative powerhouse creating something for a cause in the first place and then now i have insider info that maybe yeah exactly the coasters and then maybe you guys would be continuing with this project and then adding more products to the line so tell us how you guys came about the tamzara coasters how you decided the name okay so the way it happened was pretty I mean, it was tragic, but there was some funny to it because it started during the war, right? So when the war started, I think collectively every single Armenian, we were feeling powerless about helping Armenia, Armenians, uh, and especially Artsakh cities, those who live in Artsakh. And at some point, I don't know what was happening, me and Jessica were texting each other. And I think it started off as a joke of like, I wish we can make drones. Yeah, it started <laughs> making drones. It started making drones, like how can we help them? Like, okay, yeah. I can make my students, we can make drones yeah. at the school, be like a little like after school project. Yeah. So, yeah. so it started with that joke of us making drones and then it became of like, wait a second, it's been a while because like last summer or two summers ago, Jessica was like, oh my God, can we play with epoxy yeah. and make coasters as like a fun art and crafts? And I remember I had looked back then and the prices were insane. Like it's like too expensive to just buy epoxy and make it for fun right like uh, you have to buy the molds you have to buy the epoxy which is expensive you have to buy the dyes so i was like forget about forget about this arts and crafts like more expensive than any other art project that exists so then i was like hey remember like no, we're not gonna make drones so something that we can maybe make are coasters so <laughs> then she got covid by the way so when we were starting to make coasters she got covid so she was out uh, yeah. of of poster out making of out of commission for a while so then until she got cured and we started making coasters the war ended <laughs> so we're like oh okay so and then armenia fund we were gonna make this for armenia fund right so we were gonna donate all the money for armenia fund and then the war ended and then i'm, I'm gonna skip over what happened with armenia fund mm -hmm. so we said okay we need a new cause and at that point shushi was taken and um, I have a personal connection with Shushi. My family has been uh, doing the Aramangian. My, when I say my family, my uncle, Desil's family, my cousin, uh, they've been make, doing Ararat, uh, Ararat Jampan, wow. <laughs> Aramangian Jampan <laughs> in Shushi for like over 10 years. And I joined them for a summer in 2014. So I knew a lot of people in Shushi as well. And I was seeing how my, like Desil, my cousins, my uncles, everyone's super affected. And um, 
So then they still told me, oh, she and everyone we know was were refugees, right? Because Shushi was taken. So um, we were talking and they still told me that, um, you know, like everyone is refugee. So she's going to try to send money to families to help them out. And I was like, oh, we are making coasters. We want to make coasters. How about we join forces? So we make coasters. We give you the money. You give the money to families. And because of all the things happening around the um, other organizations, we wanted to be a trusted source. Mm -hmm. So obviously I trust my cousin with my entire life. So <laughs> I'm like, this is for sure going to reach the right people. And um, yeah, that's how Tom's Out Coasters came to be. And how did you decide the name? I think I just turned to I'm like, want to call it Tom's Out because yeah. we're like, I was trying to figure out an Armenian name that Odars can, like non-Armenians can pronounce. Yes. And Tamzara is pretty easy to pronounce, actually. Tamzara. When we were looking into the name of Tamzara and uh, we dived into the definition of it, it actually means the court. So it kind of has like a correlation to yeah. what we're making as well. Yeah. Yeah. And Tamzara, yeah. like Armenians dance Tamzara for joyous occasions too. So it like it's easy easily pronounceable it's very armenian and uh it means the core yeah. apparently we didn't know that <laughs> we stand so to something so uh tragic that happened mm -hmm. we want to shine a bit of light to them and by helping all those families within the, the space as well yeah so cute but i i prefer the story of how you guys started <laughs> that was hilarious it was true. We're like, what should we do? Non-engineers, nothing to do with tech. <laughs> We're making drones. So that's an amazing story because you guys wanted to do something, raise funds. So you found a way to just, you know, create a product, sell it, which is basically what any business is, right? You're creating products, selling and making money. But in this case, it was for a special cause. So that's where the source came from. But did you ever think that you would continue this business, you know, after everything. Um, did you have that kind of, I'm a businesswoman now? Uh, we had, we thought about it. We had multiple discussions amongst ourselves saying, okay, like, is this something temporary we are doing for the families or is it something for a long term? And then we thought like, okay, we're actually giving money directly to families and that's basically their only income for this period of time. So if we stop, we don't know what could happen to the families as well. Now we're supporting around 10 families, 10, 15 families. I think as of now, yes. And we wow. we'll, we will be sending more money yeah. in shortly. I'm just waiting for to have a substantive amount to send in. And we're, we're still making sales, so good sign. And uh, yeah, even if it's not their only source of income, it's like the extra cash flow that a lot of people need, right? Because like, Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're not going to get into politics. I mean, <laughs> I do politics all the time, so please, I will refrain myself from talking about politics, but uh, they're not getting enough aid. Yeah. And uh, even if it's just like one month to do groceries, I mean, that's more than, yeah. like, we're happy to do it. A Canadian dollar goes a long way in Armenia, so the amount of giving is going for a very long way from food, shelter, clothing, any medical needs that they need is going yeah. a long way. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that they need, we're supporting. I like we know how we have been deprived from restaurants here, and we're like, oh my god, we want to go to restaurants. Like, they want to go to restaurants, right? So why not treat them? COVID is still really well and active in Armenia, especially now they have the vaccination they're starting, but there's still a need necessary. So we looked into our schedules and we saw that okay, you know what, we can make this happen. Like after work, we come, we meet a few times a week, make our coasters, and even in Quebec now we have a curfew. At eight o'clock, we need to be home. That took a toll on our production yeah. for a while. So we decided that I we're gonna buy more epoxy. I will start making it from my house, and during the weekend we can join together and continue making products as well. So yeah. in that sense, our manufacturing didn't stop. It just took a little break for a while, but we went back on track as well. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, Ottawa, that doesn't help yeah. production at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a necessary tool for our lovely Canada here. It takes a tool, but at the same time, it's also a very good de-stressor, I found. Yeah. To just, like, shut up with something very creative. It just takes all, like, our stress away from the day just to be creative and put all our energy into something that we really yeah. enjoy doing as well. And it's so satisfying when you it's make so pretty satisfying. stuff. Like, I don't know if you, the lighting, oh, yeah. 
like it's so satisfying to just make something right with your hands so. yeah. yeah definitely and uh, even i think you guys post some stories you guys uh, do when you're doing it and we could watch it forever because just like watching someone doing something is also like mesmerizing <laughs> <laughs> uh definitely but did you ever think that you would be in business together or even be considered entrepreneurs no no <laughs> one of the yeah no <laughs> because we never thought of ourselves as business women it was never let's say in our field of choice yeah we're both because in very different is, yeah we're very in perspective, we're both in like a social field that like we're always with people, we're dealing with people. And when it comes to the world of finance and business, it's something that I don't think we were ever interested in. We're more of the consumer than the maker, if you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> business has nothing to do with being plain and chill. Uh, look at me. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, because I, I kind of disagree there. Um, you're saying you're always with people helping people and what is a business always it's always something like too but i don't think in the fields that we studied in and the degrees that we received it's never no been in that no. i work for the minister of small business okay, okay it's, been, exactly. it's been two years and i work with entrepreneurs all the time with businesses all the time so when you work with them you don't think that oh i will be like them like them <laughs> negative like uh, my focus has always been like um anyways i'm not going to get into details of what i do but to help them in general to navigate get the programs the fundings that they need whatever and uh, policy making whatever whatever and i don't know it just never occurred to me that you know i could like right now obviously we're still not an official business we're just raising funds but it never occurred to me that i can be in that position as well right like it was never my plans i always been focused on politics um I don't know. I'll think people. So, uh, bottom line is anyone can become a, anyone can be anyone. even us. Even us. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. When I say that, I want to take it back at the same time because not everyone. But if, <laughs> what you studied, eventually, if your purpose is to create something to help, yeah, someone, yeah. you're gonna do it. I mean, for entrepreneurs, the literal definition is identifying a need and producing that need to find a solution to it. Right. So we we found a solution to the need of raising funds. But other than that, the one thing that we noticed, and I think that's why we're, we want to continue this, is that the epoxy business is, uh, we never knew exactly how it works, but um, we noticed that our approach was very different. And I think our approach is actually working. So I, I guess we can cover that right now. So usually what yeah, you please. see in epoxy, yeah, usually what you see with uh, epoxy users is that they will create something, okay, like anything, posters, um, trays whatever and they will sell the already made product right like whatever they, they will post a picture they will say this is available what we want to do is to change i don't know if you notice but we always customize everything right and it's something that is more rare in the epoxy world where we will ask the person for example let's take the hot root sets you know it's half white but like you can choose which color to put this and it's it's we make it customized and uh, it, it's more rare. It takes a bit more time, obviously, because we're, we are customizing it for each people. But we notice that people like the idea of having something made only for them and to be, because to, the, the other places, it's just whatever is, is available at that moment. Uh, more of a customer care, like for example, we showed you the hadu, we have also the sushi. Can't really see, but it's more of like a purple and a white. But originally, it was uh, transparent with like a little bit gray and white. But one of our customers said, "We want it white and purple." I'm like, "Sure, why not?" So it's very focused on them, and also gives our clients the opportunity to be creative as well. Yeah. To try out different colors that they ever want to uh, pick to really pick their brains see yeah. what we can do, what we cannot do, and just give them the opportunity to have a hand in their product that they want. Absolutely. Um, I think that's also a, a concept that's very, very popular with millennials because we just love to customize, personalize, whatever. And Absolutely. we die for it. I like, love to customize and personalize anything I buy. If I can't, I'm just like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I would show 
mine too, but I actually gifted it to Taniel for his new condo. <laughs> That's so sweet, but yeah, just an example. Like someone wanted dark purple, but with glitters. So we made it happen. That's very nice. We have orange too, with like uh, gold flakes. And some people are being even more creative because we sell a set of four. So one, two of our clients actually want us to do the Atzach yeah, fly. It was really fun and gives us a challenge as well to really yeah. push our own creative boundaries as well. Absolutely. Twenty posters. That when put together create the oxal fly. Well, like four, four of them. Four, so we have red, blue, orange, orange white. white. Oh. Yeah. It would have been more impressive if it was like a whole table. <laughs> it would. If it someone would. wants it, DM us. We, we can make, make it. it. Did it ever occur to you that the process of just waiting for the request first before creating something is more of an eco-conscious way of doing business? Because you know, you're not creating products where it's sitting there, the inventory is sitting there. Did you mean it to be on this eco-conscious way or was it just like, a, hey, if you want to customize, let's customize? Honestly, it had to do with money. Epoxy is really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to waste and be like, oh, people are liking what? Honestly, we could probably start making in advance. Uh, like, we know the shapes that are popular. We know the designs that are popular. We could start making in advance. But I don't think we're at a place right now where we want because... As I said, people are happy to customize, so um, we could make them, but then people will come and want another design, which is totally fair. This is what we want to do. I feel like it'll be more wasteful if we actually yeah. make it firm, because we actually thought about, oh, let's make like a few sets in advance. But since we saw the majority of our customers, it's more custom than anything. So we thought that if we're making what we already designed yeah. in advance we're actually wasting more product and we're actually losing more money mm -hmm. than that so we very based it on our customer service our having yeah unique products yeah um, we tell we're very honest with our customers we tell them like it will take, it take this amount it'll take a while this is like two weeks for example for making it curing it packing packaging it and delivering it we do our own deliveries as well yeah so we give them a, a certain Toronto. estimate time, yeah. Except Toronto and International, we ship. Yeah. But um, here in Manchon, Laval, even And Brasar. Ottawa. And Ottawa. Whenever I go to Ottawa, I bring posters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so from your question towards eco-friendly and making it more sustainable, we don't make it in advance. The designs, we wait for the customer's word and we make it mm -hmm. then and there. So the epoxy industry where it's very creative yet a lot of people copy each other did you ever come across an issue where another creator came up to you and said that's very similar to what i do no no we tried we, to yeah we honestly it's very unique so okay let, just for an example let's say <laughs> as an example they run across so usually what people do with the gold leaves they will mix it in the mixture and they will pour it I personally didn't like it because it's very clustered and um, it's very clumpy. Clumpy. You don't have control over the aesthetics, right? Because like you're just pouring it and, and you let it be. We place the leaves one by one. No one else really does that. The technique we came up for Shushi, it came up with trial and error. Like, I think we watched a few videos at the beginning, but it didn't work for us. Like we didn't get the, we didn't achieve the look we, yeah, wanted. we wanted. Yeah. So with trial and error, Jessica, this is Jessica's baby, like this design. <laughs> And she she came up with the technique and our own technique. We never seen like other colors being mixed together. Cool. So kind of moving away from the product itself, I want to get into your heads and see how you think and what your mindset is like. So when you're thinking now of officially launching it as an actual business instead of a fundraiser. Um, what are the steps that you started taking? Because startups are not easy. They're simple. They're not easy. <laughs> oh. What's your strategy like? So right now, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, um, it, it's more like we, okay. There's still a lot of things that we don't know uh, for sure, but I think a lot of basics we have kind of started to get a hang of it. Uh, it's a bit too early to divulge, but like, for example, we didn't know where to get some products. So we were looking at like Alibaba and like China. And then um, I made more research and I found Canadian alternatives, which was super exciting for me personally. And Jessica too, I think she was on board. Even if it's a few more, no, no, it's only a few more dollars. 
only a few more dollars and uh, yeah it's it, it's more in line with like it's handmade made in canada etc so it's just the research part of it and just finding companies with like similar values of us because we didn't you know like we're helping arts of families we're trying to yeah. be nice like i don't know like you know what i mean like just people who have the same values and just gets from other companies with similar values so that that was important and yeah like pretty much willing to spend one or two dollars extra per product to to get to that so that's where we're at. We have started locating some of those products, but there's still some missing pieces. Uh, we need a website. We still haven't started that part. We need other stuff. So it's still early, like, but we're hoping that uh, if we continue working and we continue finding what we're looking for, we can actually launch this and make it into a business. But as of now, it's it's still early. We're, we're really at the beginning of a startup. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. <laughs> Definitely a process. And I could uh, speak to that, but not today. <laughs> we won't get into more details because we'll, we'll just wait on the sidelines until you guys tell us, hey, this is happening. And we're so excited to find out more, but uh, we won't harass you any longer Thank for that. <laughs> so um, for everyone at home who doesn't know, uh, me and Jess, we're Scouts leaders together. We've been Scouts for a very long time. Which is like a youth group. So what I'm trying to get at by explaining this is because we have some viewers out there who are actually our Scouts. So we want to let them know that whatever they learn through Scouting will eventually be applied when they become entrepreneurs or they want to become a writer or whatever they want to do right so um that's one of my goals through through this is showing to the, being able to have them relate to someone who has a startup who has a business who's who's successful in what they do so jess can you talk to us a bit about what things did you learn through scouting that eventually molded this mindset of yours that you are able to apply to your business today? Oh, there's actually multiple things. I, I say this even to my students at work. Um, what I give clients to scouting is my work ethic. I feel like they I learned to have a very good work, work ethic, especially when we go through campings. Um, I've been a scout since the age of five, so I'm 25 now. So for 20 years, I've been a scout. Oh my God, 20 years, <laughs> Jesus, well and it's I love it it's something that I feel like it's in my blood and from a very young age they've taught us my past leaders this is what I try to teach to my current group to have a very good work ethic to put your all you can put all your energy to something that you really love to get a good basically like um, that's one of them it's also our motto so to rise and rise higher i feel like that has an amazing mean to it it's something that i put in my daily life and i feel like in our work as well that don't give up like if you're trying to do something well you can also do that even better just believe in yourself you can do it and you can always do better i feel like that's a very good model like to have and to work with as well and i feel like discipline as well that's one thing that i strive on we have to be very disciplined especially in our work, we can't say, oh, let's take a week off or let's take a two week off, or, you know, we'll do that order later, even though like I'll admit it has happened during Christmas time and the holidays, like we've had slack off. But once we bounce back, we're very disciplined in making sure everything's being delivered, it's being packaged, we're on point. And that's something that applies to your everyday life as well. Making sure you're on task, you're doing it well, because once you start to slack off, it's a very slippery slope. So once you go down, it's very hard to get back up. Yeah, 100% agree with everything you just said. So we've we've spoken with Nana before, and she sort of like touched upon discipline as well. So Arivik, what I want to know is, did you have the same experience being part of the youth group? Um, I mean, ish. <laughs> well, I mean, Balanigan is uh, is different, but um, I. I think in general, being part of a youth group and then after being part of Kim has really benefited me in my professional life, uh, not only startups, professional life. And that's why I think uh, people undermine the importance of being involved in the community. Uh, you learn skills that no one else will teach you. Um, leadership, um, 
honestly leadership like uh, the the fact that I was president of committees and the, when I was in Balanagan I was the it's not called vice president but like a secretary kind of but like you know hierarchically like you're kind of like a vice president um and like professionally that has really helped me just to know how things work uh, how to manage teams um, especially like at work when things go south, um, people kind of individually panic. And then because you come from a youth group, you come from all these organizations, you can kind of um, not clone people down, but you can kind of bring people together. And I think that's something that uh, we are, we benefit in the Armenian community and other other communities too, who like the Jewish community is the one I can think of that, that kind of has a, a similar structure. Uh, that's been useful. And when it comes to the, to the startup, just to bring it to, to the business aspect, um, what I've noticed is that because we were part of these groups, first of all, I mean, it, it has been ingrained in our brain that we need to help others. Um, it, it just the way we have been brought up, uh, not only in our culture, but those groups, like the amount of time we have spent Sundays or Saturdays doing bake sales, um, doing event. organizing events, and like there's no profit for us, right? You're just doing it because you know you're going to raise money for either your association or for, for something else, right? So um all those things and i think it's if in a business perspective it's like kind of rare someone coming in and saying okay like i'm going to make products i'm going to sell like a business but i'm not going to make any profits because right now we're we're zero profit we're in deficit and we know it's worth it because it's like an investment our money is creating more money for for ourselves right like that that's our approach and it's completely working like any money we're investing is duplicating or tri tripling through through this and it's it's rare and i think that's a culture that comes from being involved in youth organizations like scouts or balanagan so if someone from the outside were to listen in like i'm talking about a non armenian who or anyone who hasn't been part of organizations like this who hasn't felt firsthand that you know helping is another source of benefit besides making a profit would say that your business is not sustainable and that you won't be able to do this for a very long time hmm. What are some of the benefits that you see yourself that you're like, okay, well, I could technically do this for a very long time, as long as I have some kind of income coming in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like we're both employed. Thankfully, we're one of the, in the category of people like one of us that we were both not impacted by COVID-19 and monetary, like we yeah. kept our jobs, we kept making money. So I think we come from a place of privilege. It's not something that someone with and our incomes are not considered low at, as well. Like we're not, we're privileged. So we're very privileged. Yeah. And we live with our parents, one of us. Um, we don't have any bills. We don't have any expenses. Minimum, minimum expenses, yeah. minimum bills. So it's a place of privilege. It's not sustainable for most people. And we're, we're aware of our privileges. So uh, it's not something for everyone. It's probably if someone wants to do something for like this, um, like, like a long-term full-time long business, yeah, I it's, feel like it will be very <laughs> tough, especially as like we have the privilege of to work and to do this business on the side. Yeah. But I feel like if we didn't have an outside income coming in, we wouldn't be able to do what definitely not. Today. Definitely not. So now that you're kind of getting into this like business world, um, did you ever think of creating another source of income for yourselves just in case so that you could keep helping people? I think so like Jessica's working uh, full time I'm working full time I have applied for masters crossing fingers so I will lose some income yes. I, will, I will lose income once I start a masters hopefully so this will be my income hopefully if everything works out but I'm the income <laughs> Jessica Jessica's my like but um yeah i don't know like there's no third option right now i think for for either of us like right now we we have two options our full-time job and this and then we'll see we'll okay. cross that bridge when we yeah get there. exactly a great man once said we'll cross that bridge when we get there interesting interesting and yes definitely um you're right uh, getting extra education or not necessarily going back to school but knowledge is everywhere so continued learning is highly 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 suggested and i know just would be like yes for someone who works in the educational sector i i believe that not, i know for a fact that not everyone is made for school but just to have that option available for you it's not something i would ever bring someone down for not wanting to get 
more education to get a higher degree if that person is willing to put the effort and the time. She knows what she's getting herself into. And it's nothing to be looked down upon. It should be actually encouraged. Yeah, definitely. So let's let's kind of get into that a little more. So you're we're talking about learning, and learning is a form of personal growth. So what is it that you guys do every single day so that you know you don't get disappointed when you don't get a sale this week or some, something a, a, along those lines? What is it that you do every day regarding personal growth? so that you're you're always at a higher vibrational state well in my field every day is something new every day is a new learning experience my day-to-day -day life is not something that i could predict it's something that i can't um foresee or forecast even though i have my to-do list there's a big chance my to-do list will not be done so every day it is a learning experience from my part um especially i work in the field of education and mental health so what i do is i really do my own like side research on like what is happening now how covid impacted um the mental health of adults and young children teenagers to see how i can really help and focus my energy on what's impacting them so by reading um scholarly articles looking at the news um looking into different mental health or uh clinics that's what they're looking in, upon on like for example i didn't know that because of covid eating disorders have been going through the roof and that's something that i would have never had guessed so i did my research and i'm like oh because you're out of a routine and one of your routine is your eating schedule that changes when you're home all the time so i'm like ah oh, this makes sense so I tried to put my focus on, okay, how can I give the proper resources to my students who are being affected by this? Or how can I give proper resources for my students who have been affected from different illnesses, different mental disorders, different struggles? So being on top of what's happening around me has been giving myself also like a personal growth, more knowledge of what's happening around me. For me, like, um, so for my work, I... Um, I'm the Quebec regional advisor, which means that I need to know whatever is happening in Quebec and uh, in general across Canada. So every day, I mean, I need to know what's happening, what's happening where, and kind of make links in my brain of, okay, this is happening because this happened, because that will happen. This means this could happen. So this is a bit how my brain works all the time. And <laughs> you know what it's like? What? It's like, that is my daily life and like i need to tell uh like everyone you know like oh my god and you know that meme of the conspiracy like that is me all, all the day I'm like this happens so this will happen <laughs> yeah. yeah and that is my job like almost everyone in my office needs to think that way so yeah sometimes we make the wrong conclusion but oftentimes we make the right conclusion based on whatever we see and um I work an average of like 11, 12 hours a day and I work weekends. Um, and, uh, you know, like my brain, I always need to know more things. I read documents all the time about what's happening for in the business world, COVID world. So there's always that information. And then obviously there's the information of what's happening in Armenia. Uh, I am, I don't read the art, full extent of articles because I don't like the way Armenian journalism is done, but that's a whole other thing. But the titles and just being on top of the news of, who did what, what's happening where, knowing what's happening in Turkey, you know, like um, what's happening in Azerbaijan, what's happening here and there. So I read articles, I guess, <laughs> that's my personal growth. And just to be on top of knowing uh, what's happening in the world and to place what's happening in the world and see what could happen if it can, that trend continues, uh, how that can impact us here in Canada, how that can impact us in Armenia. And my brain is a mess. <laughs> Uh, some people, well, most entrepreneurs would say keep away from the news, but I guess you can't because that's your job. Yeah. <laughs> because the news will cause a negative effect in your mind and cause you to have a lower vibrance, uh, vibrancy in energy and therefore be down all the time. But I guess you, you find a way to manage it if, if you could share with us how, because I'd love to know. I don't know, like, um, for me, it's it's like a puzzle kind of that that's the way i see it uh i i did call like international affairs and mostly like political science back in university and like one of the things of political science is like learning how to analyze the world around you and uh, it kind of gives you like a step backwards of like 
because yes, we are in this world, obviously, but not everything that will happen in the world will have a straight impact on you. Sometimes like knowing what could happen will prevent you from feeling down or being impacted fully by what's to come, right? Like for example, I don't know, COVID for example. Um, yeah, let's say COVID for example. We knew since the beginning of the pandemic that economically we're gonna be all impacted, right? So kind of you get the time to brace mentally that, okay, like things are not gonna go as planned. Your favorite restaurants might close, your favorite boutiques will close. Like, you know, it's small things, but at the end of the day, like if I wasn't reading or being prepared mentally for these things, I would have felt impacted or like people you love might lose their job. And, you know, like uh, people can be in denial about that, but because you are exposed to those news, even the negative news, you can be like, prepare yourself. You can be like, okay, this might come. Let me brace myself for this to come. Or like people that you love might get the disease and, um, you know, just, just got the disease. <laughs> but, you know, like men mentally, we were prepared that she is statistically the most likely to get disease <laughs> because disease. I work at a school with children. Yeah. And, you know, like some people can, Take this as a surprise because they weren't reading the news of who's getting who's getting sick but like if you know who's gonna get sick you're like okay she she she's gonna get sick. you know it's like it's just like preparing yourself like that's the short answer i don't know if that made any sense but it made sense in my head it did, but at the same time a lot of people won't have that analytical approach when they're watching the news because the news is also sometimes very biased so yes. so there's that too but uh, nevertheless, like it's always taking something with a grain of salt and then preparing yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, I personally, not only because of what I studied, but, uh, for fun, when I have time, I used to read books like that are more history related and yeah, history related mostly. So if you have the knowledge and knowing what has happened in the past and the patterns of what, because history repeats itself. Yeah, history repeats itself. Memory, if you know what has happened and you see the news, you can identify what's fake, what's being um, over-exaggerated and what's real. So knowledge helps you navigate the news. And if you approach, like, for example, I don't know, like uh, if you watch Middle Eastern, what's happening in the Middle East and, you know, like BBC or CBC, they're telling you this is happening, but you have no knowledge from that region, you will believe what they're telling you. But if you have knowledge of what's happening in the region, you can identify the truth the exaggeration and uh, you know navigate yourself and not be negatively impacted by the news because not everything being told is true and that's life basically in this scenario ignorance is not bliss <laughs> no it's really <laughs> not <laughs> so um you both talked about reading articles and not necessarily books and i know you guys said we don't really get a chance to read a book for personal growth we our day-to-day -day jobs are our personal growth journey so but this is also another example for everyone out there that, you know, you don't have to necessarily read a book to, I don't know, uh, have a certain type of mindset towards uh, this topic or that topic. Like, just following proper resourced articles, uh, scholarly articles, and those types of researches, then you'll be able to make critical decisions versus yep. reading any kind of media. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the same applies for Jessica's field. I mean, for what I was saying, like all the psychological and uh, mental health stuff, like if you have zero knowledge, there are so many, so many fake articles out there about claiming, I don't know, like holistic nutrition, for example. I know this has done, damaged a lot of people, for example, uh, the, their image, their, their like eating disorders and etc. It's okay to also question your own judgment, especially if you have a mindset A and if you do your research and if you're willing to question yourself, you're more open to see what else is out there. Because a lot of people, what I've noticed is that they believe their own truth, but sometimes your truth can be false. And a lot of people, it takes a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow to admit that you were wrong. So that, I think that's something that we've noticed a lot in both of our fields, that sometimes the truth hurts, and especially your, it is your own truth. But if you put the time and the research to really look what's out there, you might come to the conclusion that, oh, wait, like, my point was wrong and this is actually right but that's also per personal growth admitting you're wrong is one of the most honorable things you can do saying that you know what this is wrong but you know what i did the research and i put the time to figure out what was right 
And I feel like that has a huge impact of what we're living right now with COVID, what happened in Farmenia, what's coming to the future. It is time to really take a step back, examine what's happening, do a self-reflection, say, okay, like what is my next steps? How am I going to approach the next situation? And to circle back to our background in the Armenian community, whether it's Badinagan or Scouts, I feel like they've prepared us to adapt mm -hmm. and also to always be ready to what's coming forth. And also to not be afraid of the inevitable and the unknown. As long as you are ready to your whatever you can, you'll be able to face, yeah, Mishpadras. You'll be able to face the unknown. And from our own culture, from what has happened to us in 1915 to now, it really prepared us to be strong characters in the world we're living in and to really be ready for whatever we face. Because even us, we can have a mistake in the coaster, we could do like a little mistake, but I think we'll be like, eh, it's okay. We'll fix it. Like we don't, we're not very hard on ourselves because we know we can fix it. We know we can overcome anything. And we're very, as long as you have a little bit of fun, don't take yourself too seriously. You can overcome anything. You know what? It is what it is. Let's move on. We know what we're going to do and laugh about it. Just a little bit of fun like that. Yes, totally. Um, so if you guys could share a little bit about your everyday routine, how you guys, you know, maintain uh, self-care, self-love, you know, because you're both working as essential workers all the time, and then you're coming together to create a product um, after work and on the weekend. So I feel like you guys are always on the go, go, go. And do you make time for yourself? Yes. <laughs> I love self-care. My mornings start every day at 6.30. Even though I don't need to wake up at 6.30, I like to take 30 minutes in the morning just for myself. Just see, okay, like I, I, in my mind, I go, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. These are my meeting. And just have time for myself until I have to get out of bed and really start my day. And I have my eight to four, maybe sometimes five day. Come home, relax, have a nice tea. Um, sometimes I like to vent my mom what happened <laughs> during the day, just like get that extra stress out or I like to vent for my friends. And um, having a, I feel like hygiene played a big role in my, in my day-to-day -day life. I'm fall in love with, um, you just smell that stuff. Skincare. 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 I love my skincare routine. I've been, that's like the one thing I've been doing it on a daily basis. And I've convinced all my friends to join the self, the skincare routine, such as my good friend here. So all in all self-care, I love a good skincare routine because you feel clean and refreshed after. And that's the one thing I've been really putting more um, research in it for clean products. I've been learning ingredients of what I'm, what's coming to my face. I'm like, oh, this is good. And I've been focused more on Canadian products, Canadian vegan and uh, paraben-free, BBA-free products. So because I refuse to age. <laughs> so really focusing that is really part of my self-care. There's actually, if you Google um, ingredients not to include in your skincare routine, you'll find a whole list. And that's what I do. That's how I got rid of almost like half a drawer of skincare because it wasn't effective. And I was like, why am I getting breakouts? And because of those products. One of my cousins, she's on this really good uh, wellness journey from like what she eats, what she consumes, what she puts on her face. She said that if you don't understand the ingredients in the green list, put it back. Because if you don't know what you're putting yourself into, if it's a long word of like 10 letters, if you don't know, just put it back. So she eats clean. She makes sure that everything's like nice. And that's something I took into a bit. If I don't know what I'm putting in my body, like why bother purchasing it? Interesting. And uh, estheticians will argue that you kind of need other stuff, but it's okay. Yeah, you can, but like in more perspective, I'll take the time to do my research and look at the products. But if it's something like it has like 25 different ingredients. Yeah. I'll be like, eh. And if the first ingredient eh. is not water. Nah. Anyway, Arabic, what about you? Um, My work days are like eight. <laughs> a.m. to 7 p.m. on a good day. On so, a good day. On a good day. Self-care is for me, I don't know, like just to 
I have a dog now, so walking my dog, even though it's for her, it's also for me. I take myself on a walk. <laughs> so Jessica and I have this thing that we have five minutes tantrums. So we tell each other, I'm going to start a tantrum. And that's actually self-care. It actually really benefits it us. It really helps. <laughs> so for five minutes straight, um, either over like FaceTime or by text messages, we just have a tantrum. And then we're like, okay, tantrum done. And we... Continue our day. We continue our day, and it's actually. What does it look like? Okay, it all started a year ago, when it was a period of we were both a lot of things were happening in one period of time, and I feel like we were both like overwhelmed, and it was a time. It was pre-COVID two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. It was a period of time that a lot of things were happening at the very same time, and I was preparing for camp. And other stuff was happening in the background we around my circle. And I had two friends over and I got so overwhelmed. And I turned to one of them and said, I'm going to have a tantrum. So my friend, he, they took out their phone, put five minutes, they're like, go. So I laid down on the floor and I started swearing. I started cursing. I said, like, I can't do this anymore. It's so much. <laughs> like, I can't handle it. It's like, why is this happening now? Like, what, what, what did I do to deserve this? What did, like, my friends deserve to happen to this to them? Like, why, why, why? And when the time was up, I stopped. I'm like, I feel so much better now. And I just continue my work. It's just like a release of, like, negative energy. And okay, like, how hey, does it work over text though? Do you record yourself having the tantrum and you send it over? <laughs> you just, just swear. Back back, yeah. back back. I think it would be more entertaining if the person saw you. We have, like, just this week, I FaceTimed her and I'm like, I'm not happy right now. And I just started to rant and she's like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, five minutes, son, you're good. Yeah. yeah. Highly recommended. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. Like, therapy. People think like once you're adults, uh, you need to behave a certain way. And you're like, no, to be functional adults, just do whatever you need to do to be functional. If that means to lay on the floor and uh, curse for five minutes, then lay on the floor, floor and curse, curse for five minutes. minutes. For me, it was jumping in snow. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Jump in snow, you open the door and yell at the top of your lungs. Like, But studies has proven that keeping self energy inside balling up over and over again it's actually very bad for your own mental health and your physical well-being so taking it out in a very healthy way that's not hurting yourself it's not hurting people around yeah. you it's very, it's very healthy absolutely or else you were gonna release your energy yeah. over on co-workers Other students people. in her case like your parents your friends and you don't want that because it's not it's nothing against them like it it could be uh, like anything, like uh, the Arts Ar Ar War, I think, uh, like uh, I was having a lot of tantrums during the Arts Ar War. Like I would just text her and be like, yo, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I'm like, lose your mind. And you know, like if I didn't do that, those like self care routine of that consists of having tantrum, I was snapping at colleagues who haven't done anything. Like they were just living their, their life. And I was just in a really, really bad mood because of what's happening in Armenia. I would snap at them. I don't want to snap at these people. Like they didn't do anything to deserve to be snapped at. So have your five minute tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. So to kind of like start wrapping up here, the last question I love to ask everyone is what is the best advice you've ever been given? I didn't get this from a person. I just saw it on online and it just like clicked. If you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else? And this is from someone named Rupal Charles. He's a drag queen and he says this, I'm sorry, I love it. It's it's very, if it's so true. And it's something that I've actually put into my practice as well when I'm dealing with teenagers and they're going to like relationships. I'm like, can you go into the mirror and say, I look good today, I'm happy, I love myself. Because it's the first step into having a happy relationship, friendship, any sort of relationships, honestly, because you're, you, you're not searching for something from anyone else because you already have it. Like, I'm happy with myself. I can hang out with myself. I'm a great person to hang out with myself. You don't need that other um, validation from anyone else because you've already given that to yourself. So that's like the first step from any friendship or relationship. So, yeah. Oh, God, I don't know. Like, there's been so many things happening in my life recently. Um Okay, how about this then? How, how about this then? What would be an advice that you'd wish someone had given you? 
oh go easier on yourself in general like just no. yeah yeah go easier um if because uh, there's a lot of things we hold especially as ethnic women in a society in this society um we are too hard on ourselves like we hold ourselves back from anything that we think we do like it's been shown that women of ethnic backgrounds they will not apply to something unless they're overqualified and uh i mean that's just because we hold ourselves and we hold ourselves accountable like oh, i don't think i can do this but why can't you like if you you saw that for example job application and you thought anything or you want a certain piece of clothing you're like oh i want to wear this but then you look too hard oh i'm gonna look ugly i'm gonna look fat so people are gonna judge me no just don't go easy over yourself yes Bravo. <laughs> amazing things uh, that i think a lot of people need to hear and that kind of um go hand in hand with all the other advice we've been hearing over the weeks now from other business ladies and they kind of you know um link together in some way and it kind of also comes back to the same thing almost all the time whereas love yourself be kind to yourself stop judging yourself and it's, it's everything like to do with you mm -hmm. it, we hold a lot of negativity in our minds so most of the advice that everyone's like this was a really good one is because it affected them Exactly. You're the only one you're consistently with for your entire mm -hmm. life. Exactly. Just make the best of it. Yeah. If you can't uh, stay in your presence for longer than 30 minutes, who, who else is going to want it to do that? Exactly. Yep. So I, I also noticed that you guys are wearing Tatik streetwear. Oh, so like, shout out their, their stands. Hot heel their stands. <laughs> Love you, Patil. <laughs> no, actually, and Patil, if you hear this, uh, you've been very inspiring of like, mm -hmm. of for us especially to start supporting other people, and not just like because we, I don't know, like it just changed at least for me, and I think yeah, I, I've seen this in you too. Our mentality. our mentality to help people we know, help people, Armenian businesses, and uh, like, yes, maybe it's a five dollars more than I would have spent on the same product but why wouldn't I spend that five dollars mm -hmm. more when it means that I'm supporting someone with my values someone from my community and yeah and also thank you Patil for implementing that mindset in us I can say you're saying she is she's <laughs> a huge inspiration as we're wrapping up here is there anything else you guys want to add for final words Alice you're doing an amazing job you are you truly are. You're opening up a platform for all our main businesses, uh, businesses, Absolutely. especially women businesses. And I just want to applaud you for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. You've been very good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. it's been very, very fun. <laughs> I've talked <laughs> to a friend that I've known a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on here and uh, entertaining me. <laughs> always, always. And yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you guys spoiled because you're you're always there to, to make everyone laugh in any situation. All right, ladies, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much again for coming on here and having a very long chat with me. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you. It was a lot yeah, of fun. thank you. And thank you for the support for Thumbs Up our posters. Just a little last plug oh, here. Okay. Follow us on Instagram, please, and yes. send us a message. You, you can see all the designs on our page, and there are potential more to come so stay tuned where can they reach you what's the actual handle kamzara.coasters yeah. coasters no website yet right no, no website, website yet, yet. Oh, yeah. and so all just instagram, instagram we'll link it below in the description so uh, you guys go better follow huh because i'm watching <laughs> i'm gonna see that workout. <laughs> and thank you again for coming on here this was a lot of fun that's it for this week you guys i hope you got some a very uh, amazing insights here. If you did, let us know in the comments below what was your favorite takeaway. And yeah, well, that's it. We're done. Bye. Just two lovely ladies. Jess. Oh my god, I was gonna say queer Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh, very essential people. We're very essential people.
Çünkü para kıntı asık. Çene 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 hazır lan. Yem jamız bu ka. Sorry, okay. Bu bitmem. Sen de salt. This is Costco all over again.